my name is Sue Ann Barrow, and I'm the Community Relations Director here at the Media Tech Foundation. This is our Executive Director, Warren Wolfe Schmitz, and we're going to regroup and reorganize for the sweet talk of the evening, Sweet Scenes of Flemington, What We Love About Our Town. Thank you. I'm going to talk about big inanimate objects, because that's what I do. Um, <laughs> I think, I don't know, 18, 20 years ago, when I first was kind of a volunteer talking to people in the town, first really got involved, um, the library, the lovely little garden that we're not using tonight because it's too hot out of steam out, the lovely little garden down there was an overgrown mess that the shrubs were up four or five feet high, and the, uh, the front door of the building, the original front door of the building, had been replaced with a, uh, a red plywood panel with a solid door in it, and it was just this intimidating ugly locked door that no one ever used. Everyone used the, the, the door back in the, in the addition. Um, and as a downtown improvement little project, um, the library said, let's make something better here. And so we replaced the, uh, the hideous plywood panel with the door that's down there now, um, with the glass, which is much more open, cut down all the shrubs in the garden, and um, the garden club, I don't know who, replanted all the things that are out there now. Um, did a little bit of repaving and whatnot, and now it's, it's a lovely little garden. And that's just an example of some of the improvements around the borough and, and what can be done. Um, and the other little story attached to this is that the library sets back and creates that little garden. And the reason it's back 20 feet from the road is that Hiram Dietz, who left all the arrowheads and everything else in the borough, his office was right here. And he wanted to be able to look up Main Street. So, so uh, I think he joined the land the library with the stipulation that the building would have to be set back so he could have his view up. I want to show you one thing, too. If you, if you push that right here, it's a little laser. Oh, look at that. That's a little oh, right yeah, there. Every architect needs a laser. Yeah. Um, Details. Ooh. Um, so anyhow, so thanks to Hiram Dietz's desire to have a view, the library has this level of garden in front of it. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see Sean out there holding meetings in the morning sometimes. So I, it's, it's a great little, a great little space. And now we're going. Um, and I, my office is right across the street, so I look at these things every single day out my window when I'm supposed to be doing work. And I look at this thing falling down every single day. And, and the, the building next to me, the Reading Large House, is this magnificent, magnificent. Uh, Greek Revival Mansion, a real palace, and all this, oh look at that laser, all this ornament up here, um, which survived in this photo from the 1930s, you used to go along the back of the building, the side of the building, on all four sides, and of course it's all rotted and fallen off, um, and now I just hope that we can save the building, forget recreating this stuff, which is my dream, but I hope we can just save the building from falling down. Um, it's a gem. It's, this is in the architecture history books. It's such a, an elaborate, and the interiors are, are exquisite. The interiors are just wonderful, except for the shag carpet and dreariness of the painting. But uh, all the architectural elements are still there. It's just lovely. Um, and this is another one of my favorite buildings in town. It's a wonderful, it's a house. It's just a wonderful house on Main Street. It's, um, the Reading Marge house from the 1840s. This is from the 1860s, 1870s. Um, the Bartles Fisher House. It's just a wonderful cupola on top. And this lovely arch, which you see all over Flemington. Um, a lot of the buildings have this lovely arch in it. And it's, it's kind of a unique thing in Flemington. You don't see it in a lot of other towns. Where did it come from? Actually, I, I think this is from Paris in the 1600s. They started using it at Renaissance Revival stuff, is where I traced it back. I think it's actually a French influence. Um, as opposed to Italian, this is called an Italianate house, but that arch is kind of a French thing. Um, but it's just a lovely house. Uh, and next to it is another lovely house. Now, a lot of these have stories, and I don't know all the stories, but there's a story about this house with two of these <coughs> the kids, all this running, and they said that the, the kids who used to live here slept up in these bedrooms at nighttime, they'd come on the balconies and whisper back and forth between the two balconies. <laughs> <laughs> So Flemington has this really rich history. This is a, a Queen Anne style house and all these different styles from the 1800s. Um, and there's, there's two huge historic districts in New Jersey, Cape May and Flemington. Um, and there's just a wealth of historic architecture here. It's, it's really a, a wonderful town. There's, there's details, all these little ornamental details on the buildings that they're different every time you look around with something new to see. And uh, it's a delight. 
Um, and all the buildings make streets. So when you move from the building, the next level is a street. So Main Street in Flemington, um, this is oops, oops, oops. this is now uh, Barclays on the first floor. But underneath Barclays, there's a lovely little arch. Um, underneath the Barclays facade, there, there was a nice Victorian building. And it had this lovely uh, canopy that came out over the street. So when you drove your horse up, um, so you could walk. Anyhow, the, the streets were protected. There's still one in New Hope, one of these uh, sidewalk sheds that come out over the street. Totally illegal by zoning, but a wonderful thing for, for people in, in the town. Um, and this, this building is now two stories in Cranbrook Avenue, 90 Main Street, where the police station is. Um, and the other thing about this great photo is the ladies' dresses. Uh, the trees, there's some other photos of town that you can't see a single building. All you see is this tunnel of elm trees. And, uh, and I was just looking today, all the trees are really kind of sad and small. And, and, and people say, want to see the buildings. But actually, it's, it's lovely, lovely, lovely in the summer to have these huge, huge elm trees and these great shaded uh, avenues. Um, that was a real wonderful thing. I'd I love to plant three times as many trees as we have and much bigger ones. And you'd see the buildings all winter, you wouldn't see them all summer. Uh, a day like today would be very, very welcome. Uh, but streets, you know, are, are for people, and uh, I can't read the date on this sign, um, but there's an electric light hanging over the street, and I don't see a single car, and it looks like it's still dirt, and here's still some mounting blocks in front of the, uh, the potting shed building, and here's early air conditioning, is the, uh, the great huge awnings. Um, so the streets come alive for festivals, for parades, for salsa night, for all those things that we use the streets for. For streets aren't just for, for cars. In town, they're, the streets are for people, and that the cars should be regarded as kind of a, a secondary use, and the primary use should be all these other things. So um, buildings are just buildings, but uh, they, have to, they have to serve the life of the town. And, uh, and there's a very long tradition. Actually, sometimes there's another photo of uh, a great big wooden arch that someone built up over the road for a, another, I think, a fireman's parade again. So they actually built this huge arch that, that everyone would parade through. Um, this is that the hotel? This, yeah, this is the Union Hotel here. Yeah. That's the hotel. This, this, this is the Union Hotel. That's the clock tower building over there, keeping up. And uh, the horse is turning to go the wrong way um, <laughs> down the street. So uh, I, don't think, I don't think that you had one way streets back. Uh, when the horses were in charge of things. Uh, and there's all these wonderful restored buildings that I really love, and I try to restore them, make them pristine. Um, and there's, there's a question about, about shabbiness and decay. And, and um, I'm not in love with the, the shabbiness here, but, but I love the signs and the, the bright, bold. The, that sign is way too big. You'd never be allowed to do anything that big um, these days. And, uh, and this sign is totally illegal as well. And, um, but this is a, a store which is, which is alive. It's been there forever. Everybody knows it. They put some stuff out on the sidewalk. Um, and it's, it's a, there's a line between shabby and, and charming, between you know, gently dilapidated and, 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 and awful and off-putting. So I don't think that everything has to be polished and pristine and, and made uh, gentrified. Um, there's, there's certainly room for, for things like this that uh, um, and I guess they've replaced the broken grass after 10 years. So yes, th things need to be maintained to a certain level, but everything doesn't have to be uh, polished to a high shine. Um, and this, I, I sit in my office and look at this all day long. And, uh, and if you recall, a few months ago, there was just a window here, and this is all siding, and this is all siding. And this is actually a very off-putting building. Um, I love the, the door cap, but the library room had a big show window, and no one really knew how to get into the building, and there's a hideous, ugly sign back there that said, museum, library, and you had to go into the courtyard and work your way into the building. It was kind of off-putting. So um, by putting this door here, we solved handicapped access issues, but we also put an entrance to the society right on the main street, so it's, it's much more welcome. There's a door right there on the sidewalk. It's much easier to find. It was a little kind of a, an exclusive club before, and I think this simple alteration, um, and they're supposed to start displaying things in my display window. Um, this simple alteration hopefully should give them a new public face, a new public presence, and make it much more welcome, just like what we did for the library. A small intervention that can have a, a pretty big impact on, on things.
But when do you think you'll be able to get the thinnings replaced on that fence? Well, yeah, yeah. Some of these are aluminum, and they're all twisted all different ways. I gotta go there and turn them around. Correct orientations. Um, all these fences, by the way, uh, were melted down for World War One, World War Two, especially for scrap iron drives. So people, they're all kind of Victorian, old-fashioned, out of, out of date garbage that Grandpa had. And so in World War Two, um, in particular, everyone ripped them out and threw them in the scrap metal drives. Uh, and so not too many of them remain, but but Main Street would have been lined with, with ornate cast iron fences. And uh, this one remains and, and not much else. <coughs> I love the flowers. This is just wonderful. These spots of color are just, just absolutely fabulous. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And the purple one smells and the pink one smells. <laughs> I haven't put my nose in that. I'll, I'll have to check it out. <laughs> Who maintains that? Uh, the Burl girls. The Burl. Yeah. They really No, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It really is. I think the, the Burl originally bought the planters and had each. Each um, business owner go out and water them, and that didn't work very well at all. So now that the borough waters them and maintains them, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. It, it's a great thing. I'm not a fan at all of, of this kind of stuff here. Um, too many signs, too many ugly signs, too many ridiculous kind of regulations and, and silly things. Um, people know there's a crosswalk, but there's a law that says they have to have the ugly yellow sign. Um, but the flowers are wonderful. I love this little horse troll. This is just a, a wonderful little thing. Uh, given by the citizens of Flemington in 1902, um, just before the cars chased all the horses out of town. Um, but it's got the, the horse trough, it's got two little dog troughs on each side, it's got a people trough on the back. And it's got the, the, the light up in the middle. It's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's, it's, a, hmm? it's right in front of the courthouse. This, this is the Hall of Records, actually. It has changed. That's the Hall of Records. Yeah. Um, it's a wonderful, you know, little civic sculpture. It's, it's a fabulous thing, you know, uh, there to adorn the borough. It'd be great if we could get the water to, to burble through it faster and, and make some sound. And the horse lost one of its ears, unfortunately. Um, but it's, it's a wonderful thing. And, and the little dog, little dog thing. So does it still, is there still water in there? They hooked the water back up. They restored it, they put the light back on it. They hooked the water up, I don't think. It doesn't matter. Nice. Yeah, you need a piece of granite and a steel pin and you need to, to glue it back on. Yeah, you could actually put the horse on your back. I mean, is it easy to find something that does not do that? No. <laughs> is there anyone on this planet that can? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. You just need a good um, a stone guy. Like a monument carver for a, uh, you know, a cemetery or something. It's when you just used to carve granite. It's just, it can be done. It's probably not worth doing. It's charming. It's, it's charming with this metal. It's like trying to fix the space, you know? Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not it's worth fixing. Yeah. It's, not, it's worth not worth fixing? fixing? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, it, would, it would take months to find someone to do it. Well, maybe the guy who wants to see the maze. And they, they told me 10 slides, so I brought 11. Um, <laughs> and I love all the big Greek rebuttal buildings. I love this little tiny, you know, almost a dollhouse in the building. Just a wonderful little little gem on Main Street. And, and I love that it's on the same block as the great big huge courthouse, the great big huge monstrous column. And here's a little tiny developer building. And uh, the interesting little story here is they just restored this um, a year and a half ago or so. They, they stripped it all down, took off all the lead paint, repainted it. And uh, they stripped down these wreaths up here. These are the, um, when you win the Olympic Games in ancient Greece, you get a, a laurel wreath for, for, for victory. And so these, these are her marks of victory up there. And uh, they're repairing all this, repainting. They found that one of them was aluminum. Um, and this is built in the 1840s. And, and they were all made out of uh, plaster of Paris with horse hair mixed in together. That's what you make these things out of. Some kind of patented composition of plaster and horse hair and, and strong. And one was aluminum. Like, aluminum? You know, aluminum was, it wasn't even known in the 1840s. It, it wasn't, hadn't even really been discovered. Um, Go back to the door accounts. Right here, these, we just restored these. Um, in fact, there used to be two, and I had it, it was too spare now because we could only fit two on the buildings of the floor. Um, these are aluminum. So I think in, this 19, in the 70s, when the Historic Society did this building, they, they went up to that little Southern Law Office 
they took down one of them, they made a mold, they cast it in aluminum, and then and they cast they made a rubber mold, they, they threw out the plaster one they had, and they made a whole bunch of aluminum and they gave them back one of aluminum for that little aluminum box. So that, that mystery was finally solved by discovering that all these are also aluminum. So anyhow. I could go on forever, but that's the nice slides on the I found out how you uh, cheated the ten slide minimum by going back. It's very clever. Twenty-one yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> slides. Yeah. yeah, that was great. Sorry. <laughs> that was exactly what what I had you know, hoped for. And uh, that, so, do we want to just keep yeah. plowing through and take questions? And uh, no, let's have Audrey. Oh, Audrey Shaw. Sure. We'll make the transition. Yeah, we need to. And so, if you have a lot of questions for Chris, why don't you uh, fire away and we'll transition over to. Any questions? Do we have coffee? Yeah. When you're looking at some of these uh, supports that come out of a lot of the structures, which are very oh, they oh, basic brackets, yeah. Yeah, yeah, brackets. Are those constructed out of sawn pieces that are basically glued together? Yeah. But they're not glued, they're nailed. Um, yeah, we've taken some of this apart. We rebuilt some for the, uh, the town clock book. They're, they're a bunch of two inch, they're two by tens. They're, they're kind of two inch piece of boards, but like real two inches or three inches. Yeah. And there's like five of them usually. And so it, they, they just built them up. And then there's um, gazillions of big cut nails that nail them all together. They don't even use blue, they just, but they're all nailed together. Um, yeah, they're really hard to, um, we try to get carpenters to, to do it today and they, they whine and complain. And they just, they just, well, just, just Nail a bunch of wood together. It's, it's difficult. Um, that's all they are. Has anybody ever had dinner in the Doric house? Mm -hmm. I'm the only one. Yeah. You're the only one? You're the only one. I can't find it. There's one photo of it back in, in uh, before it was. I've never found a really good photo of what it looked like on the first room. Well, Mrs. Alholm ran it. The restaurant, at least when I was there. And her husband, who was the architect at home, who designed the addition to the library, used to sit in the corner reading his paper. Chris, what do you think is going to happen to the hotel? <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk about it. I've had over the last. Over the last eight years, I've had eight people walk into my office and say, I'm going to buy the hotel. I'm going to redo the hotel. And I say, great, <laughs> great. I'm your guy. I'll do it. What if, let's get started. Yeah, and here we are. And here we are. And there's been a hole in the roof. For, you know, as long as I've been crawling through with different people, there's been a hole in the roof. I think they finally put a tarp on it after eight or ten years. Really? Um, yeah. yeah. If you look at the North Tower next to Higgins, it's, uh, it's, it's tipping in. There's a... A big beam in, this, in the attic that failed. So that old that's the way you reconstruct? No, well, they got to get to it. They, they, they got to get moving on it because the water coming right. in the building is, is getting worse. So you can start. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. I'd love to hear what it's like. You, you've probably been up in the attic or in some of the other. If you go on Weird New Jersey, yeah. there's a whole bunch of photos of people that have taken inside. It's, you could film a great horror movie inside. It's really cool. There's a, I've actually been on the third floor. Yeah, it's really cool. All the paint is peeling. And there's kind of a, a iron bed frame standing in the corner of these empty rooms, and uh, it would make a great horror film set. Right? Well, the floor it's, it's, it's in good shape, though. Actually, it's, the building is in good condition, and the paint is all peeling, and it's all dilapidated, but it's not falling down yet. But it needs, needs help. Is there a coolest feature that you've discovered in there that people might not know about in the hotel. It's all cool. Um, <laughs> a lot of the original stuff on the first floor is gone. So what you see on the first floor in the restaurant is not the original for the building. Um, the stair used to wind up all three floors. That's pretty magnificent. Up under the attic, it, it was never finished. It's all just open frame. It's 10 feet high up in there. It's a great big Beautiful. tall attic. It's, it's really handsome up there. Are all the murals um, someplace in the building? The murals are, are in, in terrible condition lying on the floor, on the upper floor. Mm -hmm. Are they all there? Can they be restored? I don't know if they're all there. I have no idea. But then there's, there's a roll of canvas on the floor, paint peeled, dripping on, water blowing in the window and such. Yeah. Yeah. 
needs a rescue. We He's need architects and 911. <laughs> well, this need architects. Needs dollars, dollars, you need dollars, dollars. Need dollar signs. Yeah. 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 Need lots of dollar signs. Yeah. But I think the um, the idea to make it into a boutique hotel, the, the big project makes the most sense to me. Um, it doesn't make sense to just make it apartments or something. But it's, it's the borough would benefit tremendously if it was the big hotel, and I think that's that's kind of developing to be a good consensus. Um, but that means big money. But then you get big impact. So draw we'll, we'll people from a wide area back into the borough. So is the section in the back newer? The wooden wing in the back is, is really pretty old, actually. Um, well, yeah, there's a one-story brick section at the back. Um, that's really pretty old, uh, probably as old as the original building, 1877, 1878. And that's, there's, there's, a, there's these things called Sanborn, Sanborn Fire Insurance Maps. The Sanborn Company drew these maps of every town in the East Coast, um, hand watercolored, and they would update them every 10 years. And they showed all these different codes. Um, they showed every single building in town, if it was brick or stone or wood, and what the use was and where the windows were and, and how big the boiler was for fire insurance purposes. And they're wonderful documents. So we have those. Princeton University has them all online, actually. Um, and uh, they show the building changing and getting bigger. And they show all the stables in the back. There's all these you know, wooden stables in the back for the horses, obviously. And, uh, and they show the, the evolution of the building. And, and there was a, there's been a bar in there since it was built. So that, that one story would brick section in the back because I had always been in the bar. Um, and the, the big wood section, which is in pretty terrible condition, was, was there very early on. And I think those are all little little rooms. I think your servants stayed in the, in the wood section and, and you stayed in the uh, in the brick section. The what does section. it take to qualify for a historic preservation? Uh, well, it's, it's the building's on the National Register because all yes. Flemington is on the National no one has qualified individually, but that's just a lot of paperwork and time and some money to do that. Um, and there are preservation tax credits. So if you restore it the way it was, you can get tax credits from the federal government. But the more you want to change it, the less likely you are to get those tax credits. Uh, my name's Audrey Kirscher, and I, by trade, am an architectural photographer. That's what I do for a living. But I'm also a fine art photographer, and all of my fine artwork is architectural and structure. Um, I'm not an architect, so uh, I'll give uh, Chris the eye if I need to help with the architectural questions. Um, and I'm also one of the co-owners of Sony Fine Art that is opening in Stangle Factory. Um, so I thought what photographers like to do is we like to help people see the world the way that we see it. So you're going to see some different type of images from different angles. Um, and hopefully I'm going to help you see things that you don't normally see um, when you're out and about in Flemington. This is my home. Um, I live at uh, 45 Broad Street. And um, last year we undertook um, putting hardy siding on. And by doing that, we had to rip all of the existing siding down um, and put the hardy on. Historical approved, but it was it was just very dilapidated on most of the sides, and you know the wind channel coming through the home. Um, but what did you say it was called? Hardy. Hardy. Hardy plank siding. So what you can see in the image is um, I like showing people the 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 underside of the house because it's all balloon um, framing is what it's called, right? Correct. And what that brick does is it goes all the way up to the attic, um, which is really something to see. And um, all of the nails were, they're not handmade, but they are the first type of manufacturing after hand making, which is almost handmade. So and what's the vintage? The vi I'm sorry? What's the vintage of that? Uh, the house was built somewhere in the 1840s, we understand. And also from my neighbor, um, my home, his home, and the one next to me were actually moved from Main Street back to Broad Street. Mm -hmm. um, so these houses have been through a lot. Um, and I think they were moved from some other state before they were actually moved down here to Flemington, from what I'm told. I haven't verified that. Um, we have all the original windows in, and if you can see right in here, these slots, that's actually where the weight pulley systems are. Um, so all the windows still have and they actually work great. If I ever build a house today, I'm going to have those put in 
forget the whole track thing. Um, anything that can last for 200 years, because we actually took a look at them, and they're you know, these big iron things. They're really cool. Um, and then over on the side here, you can see the, uh, the hardy. Actually, is that the hardy? No, it hasn't been put up by then. Um, so is there any fill between those bricks or not? Uh, no. Okay, so there's... Not that I'm aware of. Actually, there is, isn't there? Right. Yeah. There's a little bit. The bricks are mortared, and there's yeah. little boards. You can see little horizontal boards every once in a while. Right. Uh, which were for, for nailing things, too. And then there's some that have cross beams oh, on the have, side. No, they're not a support system. They're not part of the support. No, no the bricks are non-structural. But I mean the, the boards. And the... Well, the, the vertical boards are studs doing work, and the horizontal boards are just... I'm not quite sure why the horizontal boards are okay. There's some that actually on the sides that went diagonal. Well, those are structural. Right, to hold up the wall, and then on the inside it's plaster. So if you can imagine, um, it was cedar siding, brick, and then plaster. There's a little, yeah. little bit of a wind tunnel. Um, this is actually one of my favorite views from Broad Street. So if you go up by where Teresa's is, and um, right around sunset, and you take a look to the left, you actually see the, I think the only two water towers um, in Flemington. And that's what it is, is they, the, they're sisters, right? Okay. All over, you know, you go to Philly, you go to New York, and they still use those, and they have to by design. Um, but, you know, I guess the building had them, and they continue to use them, and they're in beautiful condition. And um, they really add a nice, um, interesting um, piece to our, our, our skyscape. Are those still functional? They look like they are, because you can see this um, coming down into the building. Yeah, I'm not I sure if they are or not. If they're not full of water, the wood dries out, and huh. they don't hold their shape. Right. So actually, they, 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 they work best when they're full of water. I've was, seen some that, that have been crumbly in Philadelphia, and they don't look nice like these there. So, mm. get beautiful light on them. Was that for water pressure? Yeah. Have those up there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just storage. Yeah. yeah. Storage and then it all yeah. flows down. Yeah. But they're wood? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. No, they're, they're wooden barrels, essentially. Mm -hmm. All the, the super high tech skyscrapers in Manhattan, the super high tech, everything's shiny glass and steel, they still have wood ones yeah. sealed up on the top. Really? Because the wood yes. is the best. Yeah. yeah all still, over New York. Wood. And then there's there's special companies that all they do is they go and they replace the wood yeah. every five to ten years in these barrels because they're essential to the New York um, city landscape that, for them to get water. They yeah. they couldn't have the city without them. So we've got a couple right here. Um, so this is um, a modern picture. I I took this. What it is is it's that it's that marriage of um, really seeing what happened with the old. So if you can imagine when the headstone was first set, that tree was probably maybe this big, and it was way over because why would they, you know, put the headstones so close to it? And then over time, um, the tree grew around it, and they they kind of melded together. Um, and this is actually in the cemetery where uh, Church and Broad Street meet at that corner. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool if you if you walk around in there you'll you'll go and see it. Boy, if a picture could tell a thousand words, that's yeah. uh, yeah, that's unbelievable. So we do. I mean, everybody knows of our. I, I like these kind of shots because how many ha folks have lived over five years in Flemington? 10, 15, 20? Have any of you seen that? Have you gone through and saw it? Okay, so two, three, maybe. Right. So neat, neat stuff lurking right under our noses um, in our town that we walk through how many hundreds of times? Church and where? Hmm? Church, church and Broad Street, church. right at the left. Baptist church. At that, Baptist 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 church. Baptist church. Baptist church. Right, so it's the Baptist Church is on the main street corner and the big yeah. cemetery behind it. It's um, it's closer to the building. That's why I never seen it. Yeah, it's not, you can't see it from the road. You have to walk in a little bit. Can you read the date on it? The date? I cannot, but I bet you if you walk up to it, you can. I hope. I mean, I know the first name is, it looks like it's Susan. It's, it's a woman's. I see something black well on there as well. I mean, some of those are so faded in that cemetery, but you can't 
can barely read them stuff. But I don't think that one's going to be falling over anytime soon. <laughs> trees holding up. Um, so, very iconic in our town, right? The Presbyterian Church. But I, I love, this is my favorite part of the church. So when you look at the entire church, the one thing that catches your eye is, is the piece of it that you can see from all the way up on um, Main Street as you're coming down. And then you get the memorial in front of it. So when I took the image, I just I really wanted to isolate it. And um, kind of part of what Chris was saying, I mean, is you look at the windows, you look at the, the little circles that they have. I don't know the architectural name for them. And it almost looks like it has little bird houses way up in the top. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just I, I just think it's beautiful. And then you've got the that with the stone that's been there forever, um, which is a good thing. Because I'm sure if it was ever wood, it would have knocked down. <laughs> like our poor courthouse. Um, and off right? We, anybody that comes to Flemington, if you don't know Flemington, then it's very hard to find the egg auction. And my personal opinion is, is that this is probably one of the most beautiful buildings that we have. Um, I love the circular rotunda area. I love that it has that, um, you know, constantly Reynolds German fairy tale feel to it. And it's almost like you want to go in there and start telling, you know, Grimm's fairy tales to kids. It's a magical building. And then you think about that spot and how it was like an iconic place for uh, Flemington, you know, the egg auction. You know, that was that was the center of town at one point. That's why people came and left and the whole reason for us being. And now it's tucked back in the corner. It's a little gem. And then the point five overlap. Different <laughs> point of view. Um, uh, I took this picture, and I had another one which I didn't include because I wanted to include others, and I'm a good girl, I stick to my head off. Um, but the reason that I love this building is um, its presence. And even when you're inside, you know, if you're sitting in here, you have this great feeling because it's, you know, downstairs is the library, place of knowledge, it's calm. Um, but you've got the arch windows, and then over many areas, and you can see it along the top, all the growth of the vines. And then on those vines, there's tiny little um, leaves. They don't get real big, um, but it's just enough that when you, you look at it up close, and when you have a nice day, maybe, I would say around sunset, so Chris, you probably see it all the time, um, the shadow casts on it. And then, so you see this beautiful ca uh, shadow that casts over and then reflects off. So, um, I wish all the things were made this way. <laughs> I, I just want to point out the uh, stairway that you might have come up. Uh, yes. Chris, Chris worked on that, right? And yes. You used um, recycled uh, the stone. He he sort of repurposed. Well, the, the stairs come straight down from that door, straight down to the sidewalk. And uh, the state came through and said, "There's no landing. It's illegal, and, and we're gonna we're gonna kill you." Um, so uh, so um, Mary Melf, who was the president of the council then. And uh, she said, we've got to do something. Um, so actually, all the treads and all the limestone that you walk up and down was recycled. So we, we took all the stones apart, and I made a diagram and had to cut them and had to reposition them. They had, actually, the, the bottom two are new, but we recycled a lot of them. One of the reasons that um, I think you're, you're so respected in this field is that you don't know that that's new. Yeah. You walk up every, every time, and you, yes. you think it's part of It's about there. five, six years old, I guess. It's only five or six months. Yeah. And it's so functional, yeah. it's, it's so used, and so... Recycled limestone? Well, there's a stone that was there from 1913. Um, but uh, it had to be recycled and reused and, and cut and repositioned. Oh, I see. And rearranged so that there's a, a landing. So, that when you, so you come up to the door with your tuba, you, you just have to worry about the door and not about falling down the stairs. Which was kind of fun because uh, it was very functional. He was he happened to be coming up when John was bringing his tube up, and I said, "Oh, you want to help with the tube here?" Kind of, kind of awesome. But uh, great job on that. That used to be the, the front door of the library, right? That was the main well, part of it. No, the, the front door was on Main Street. Yes, so yeah, and that was the, the side door. Um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, a little more tuning here. Um, this is my kill. <laughs> uh, 
um, so like you said, we're opening the gallery at uh, Stangle Factory, and it is. Um, but this is before construction. This is right after um, the walls that they had constructed around the kilns had been brought down. So you're going to see timbers over here. Um, you can see all the way through to the back area where John's um, pottery studio is now. Mm -hmm. And um, debris everywhere. I have quite a few. And then also you can see the dock work at the top. All that dock work has been taken down. We've got brand new HVAC systems that have been put in. Some new dock work. Um, we're all cleaned up. Um, was that all closed off when it was a store? Yes, so when Falls Graph was in there, if anybody's been in there, you'd have these little windy paths you'd walk through, and you're like, why am I walking this way around the corner? And what they did is they put walls all around the kilns. Okay. There's three of them in there. And um, so it, it just made for a very weird walking path. Um, you know, but luckily, you know, they, they pulled them. Thank God they didn't pull them out. I don't think they could have, otherwise the building might not stand because you can see the top of the stacks coming out. Um, but we have brand new stairs that were, were just put in last week. They look really good. Um, it's going to stay that industrial feel to it. So it's, it's going to be really cool. We got gonna... iron banding around the, the brickwork? Yes. Yeah. yes. And then here, this is all filled in, but this is where they used to shovel the uh, ashes out. And there's one kiln still left, but they're open. Is um, it functional? No. It would take almost, what is it, 24 to 48 hours to heat it up to the temperature. Yeah. But it's, it, they're immense. They're really you huge. Chime in anytime you want, John. This is interactive. 3,000 3, pots in this kiln. Right. Okay. All stacked in clay cylinders called saggers. And they put the pots in the saggers and then they stack the saggers. And when you stand in front of that kiln, you look at the door. It's narrow at the bottom right and it comes out and around. It does See that because that your shoulders can go through, but your feet don't need so much room. And that's less that they have to fill in when they break the door up to fire it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now the beat up sign that you see there gives a history of the kiln and everybody that was in it, including when um, Falls Rack was in there. And there, the last thing I think it said in 2000, you know, this is now being used as some type of a, uh, a little museum. So we're going to have the sign redone, and then we are going to add ourselves to it um, as kind of like a, an ongoing memorial um, for the kiln. So nice. it'll, be a, it'll be pretty special. So sometime in September, yes. and you're over at Bluefish, or you're going to visit John, stop on in. <laughs> September open. Right. It's be it is. We're really, really excited. We're going to have some great artwork in here. Um, so this is what I was telling you about. So this is a nice close-up of that other part of the kiln, and you can see that this is open. Um, <coughs> at the bottom on the other kiln. Um, and just, it, it helps show like the sheer size of it. I'm zooming in on that. So that whole piece, if you really think about it, from floor to here, that's, you know, so put the fire in the top area, there's grates in there, um, and then they build it up, and there's one, two, three, I think there's eight of them. So there's eight fires going with the ash pits underneath, and there's three kilns. I don't know if they would have all three kilns going at once. Probably not, but they would have one firing, one cooling, one being unloaded. Okay. And they may have used different ones for different products, but the the sense that I get having fired a wood burning kiln with only one firebox is that you've got eight fireboxes, soft coal, and three or four guys who, you got one guy bringing the coal, one guy putting it into the firebox, and one guy taking it out. When you put it in that, that hole, you go to the next one, you put it in that one, you go to the next one, and you just keep going around for. 24, you know, there's shift changes, I'm sure, but for whatever long it takes to, to get the temperature. But there's a separate fireboxes? Yeah. There's eight fireboxes. So this, each this is just one. Well, one kiln is bigger and has 12, I think. Right. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any idea how hot did that thing have to get? There's over 32,000 there, degrees. There, there, there. That's just yeah, and they were able to do that with yeah, soft coal? Yeah. yeah. One of them is bigger. Right. I think one of the ones in the back is bigger. Now, can they get oxygen or they get air to the coal to get so, that kind of heat? If you, <coughs> don't correct me if I'm wrong, but you see that hole up there? 
That's where they have the oxygen come in, and there's actually, it's the size of a brick. So if they wanted to control it, they'd stick a brick yeah. in. Yeah. And then if they wanted more air, they would take the brick out. And ours, um, over in Sony, we have all our bricks in. <laughs> and I, so I'm assuming they're the, they've been there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's what we think of it as our biggest piece of artwork in the gallery. It's already there. You are amazing. You haven't, you haven't ventured down. I mean, those three kilns for the history that they have here in Bloomington are pretty amazing. But there's a little kiln on the other side of the log cabin. Right. That's right. It's a traditional North Carolina groundhog kiln that was built in 1940. Somehow, Stangle met this potter and convinced him to come to New Jersey to go to work for him. They moved the log cabin and moved his kiln up there. And we fired it for a couple of years. The war broke out. It hasn't been fired again. And that kiln is probably the only one that's kind of in the northeast from that far back. I want to fire that kiln. <laughs> <laughs> These kilns, we can't use them. No, I don't that think one, I That one, we can use it. Though. You let me know, and I'll come over and take pictures when you start firing it up. Okay. That'll be something to say. For anybody who doesn't know, John Ford, he has the pottery studio right next to Sony. Yes. My neighbor is here. I'm so excited because I remember one day I was over there and he comes over and he starts telling me all this stuff. And I'm like, this is awesome. This is amazing. I'm so glad someone knows about my film. So my next two pictures, and unfortunately there's only two, is everybody's seen the outside of the Union Hotel. I had the privilege to go in and shoot all four floors, including okay. up into the attic. Um, so I have lots of pictures, but I only brought two with me tonight. I probably could have shown the, the whole thing, but then it would have been a new hotel show. Um, I picked this one because obviously, you know, Chris has told you it's dilapidated, and I'm going to show you a wider one. But this is, um, you know, you're walking around, and it's dilapidated. And then I turn around, and this is what I see. And these are the call boxes in each individual room, so they would buzz. And then the wait staff from downstairs would come all the way up and say, yes, we can help you. Um, it's iron. It's beautiful. They don't make them like this anymore. And it's, it's still there. And it could be reused, if so choose, by whoever decides to purchase and rehab the building. Because um, most of the rooms, I think they still are in there. But it just struck me, because the whole room is decimated. And then you see this lovely, beautiful piece of uh, arm sitting there waiting to be reused. Um, and so I have many, many pictures of all of the rooms. But this one was um, my favorite. Um, you can see, like as Chris was saying, there's paint peeling off the wall. Um, you know, some of the original brickwork, similar to my own home, was exposed. You know, you're behind that. But And then, you know, outside you can see the iconic shot of the uh, of the courthouse. And I almost get a sense when you're standing there, and that's how I felt, is you can almost feel like what it could have been like when the reporters and everybody was there for the uh, trial, you know, staying in that room and being able to see outside and then seeing what happened on Main Street. I mean, that had to be a queer room. Um, but, so, it's, uh, it's a beautiful building. Um, even, even in its current state, it still has a lot of beauty to it. It's a wonderful shot because looking at the courthouse, I feel like I'm back in the 1930s. It, it's shot I mean, the way you caught it. Yeah. It's just, yeah. And I have, like I said, I have I have photographs the entire building. That'll be another sweet well, yeah, because That's why I tell everybody if somebody needs to go in there. I have them all. Take I a have. huge number of photos. Yeah, and I need it from an, um, yeah. an architectural perspective, not from a Let's go throw them up on the, the creepy ghost site and right, scare exactly. everybody down. Yeah. I mean, they're they're somewhat haunting the images because the building itself is, but it's it's a I don't know the feel of it. It's not malevolent. It's just it's sad almost. It's, it's, it wants yeah, to be sad. used. It wants to be walked through again. Um, you know the beautiful high ceilings in every room. Who sees a hotel like that these days? You know. Um, so that is the end of my slide presentation. I figured I'd end with a bang. <laughs> Thank you. Does the town have a, a historian and historian? Uh, Dick Stoloff, maybe. Dick Stoloff.
And he's, he's another guy that I'd really like to get a microphone and, and just to get a camera and, and get him to talk. I'd like to walk around with him through the town. Oh, just have him good. start telling his stories yeah. and then that, then I can, I would take, start taking pictures because that would really help and get the right details. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How often when you take pictures do you actually have a dimensional object in the picture so we can know exactly what the size of it is? Like the art stand. Why would anybody do that? Because basically with modern technology, if you have a picture of a room, oftentimes if you've got something dimensional, you can actually recreate that space. You're talking about like stitching photos together and, and creating like almost like a floor plan? Yeah, but that, that's a, yeah. There's there's um there's art architectural photography right. <laughs> and there's functional art. There's there's things now. It, it's kind of Star Wars. You, you can set up a little tripod in the middle of the room and it shoots a laser scanner and it, it builds a three dimensional digital model. Measures everything. Measures that is that is to scale. I don't it's think you'd ever get that with digital photography because of you know it's a the equivalent of a thirty five millimeter lens. You're always going to have size and ratio differences. There was a way before digital to do a, a photograph that did the perspective distortion and corrected for that and you, you could measure it. <coughs> but it was a, always an expensive, arduous, difficult process. And this digital thing that measures the building, you know, that's again, it's still very expensive and fussy. And it's, it's nothing that I do. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. It's kind of like when people talk about Restoring stuff, sitting on a planning board. <laughs> okay, the question is, is where's the money going to come from? Because basically, restoration and rebuilding are two different things, I understand. That. But basically, if the foundations are rotting, you don't have a choice if you're going to do it that kind of Are they in fact rotting? You have to go into the basement and see some of the things I've seen. You mean in the hotel or in the hotel? Yes. I've been in the basement of the hotel. Yeah, I felt the brick. Yeah, I was talking about. Yeah. yeah, in some places it's falling apart. Oh yeah. Uh, a lot of the brick in Flemington was very uh, soft fired, um, like the potting shed building. You can just stick your hand. There's a couple of houses on Broad Street. You can just stick your hands inside the bricks. The brick yard was up. Um, out North Main Street, and he was cheap and he didn't fire his bricks good enough. I mean, town is full of, of soft, porous, bad brick. Yeah. Um, so yeah. But the face brick on the hotel is, is good, it's robust, strong stuff. Jim, are you leaving? Jim's just trying to go. I just want to say bye. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, thanks. You. So, for me, being relatively well, new to Flemington, including my studio here, and being here at CN and starting to understand all the history of Flemington, how do we get people to <coughs> look at it as more than a bus stop to get to Manhattan? <laughs> What's the trick? I mean, you guys have been here for a long time, obviously. You have a lot of history here. And what do you, what do, you do? You have to ask the most successful businessmen. Bob Benjamin, Flemington first. What's he had to do? As an architect, I have a lot of clients who live on the Upper East Side and the Upper West Side. I don't know. I've had several clients who live in Manhattan and have weekend houses up here. I just went to see a guy who uh, is young. He lives on the Upper West Side. He has a, a weekend house and he needs me to renovate his guest house at his weekend house. So there's a huge attraction out here. It's not the Hamptons. People come out here because they don't want the Hamptons. They don't want that sea. But, but they come out here, they want a house in a beautiful countryside. And, uh, but that's just very quiet. They're very quiet. Uh, but there's a big attraction to this area. And you just need to, to figure out what that is and tap into it. Um, there's all kinds of people who, uh, who have weekend houses in Hunterdon County. And, and from Philly, I have clients from Philadelphia who have weekend houses out here. So um, it's just a beautiful, natural environment. Um, I ride my bicycle on the back roads constantly. It's just yeah. gorgeous. It's just it's just beautiful here. Yeah, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, so you know, coming to Flemington is part of a bigger thing. Coming to Hunterdon um, 
is, is what people want to do. They don't want to come to they want to come to Hunter. But this needs to be the, the focus, the locus, the place where, where you go into town to do something. Is there any estimate as what it would cost to restore the hotel? 13 to 15 million is what the, uh, yeah. what the, the recent study said, and that's, that's, that sounds right. And that would make it structurally sound, too. Well, would, would, would have rooms that you would feel comfortable renting. Yes, yeah, obviously structurally set up, yes. I just want to add to that. Um, we moved here 16 years ago, and we had some science to picking Flemington. Um, we went to my, my wife, Ellen. Uh, kind of, you know, but we, we drew two circles around the in-laws and about around <laughs> Newark uh, Airport, and I wanted to be able to get in the city and so on. Um, but then my father and I, father-in-law and I, uh, drove around to ten towns that we picked. Clemson was the last town, and we stopped in what, the Bagel Smith, which is now the Shaker, and I just listened to the people, and um, I got a feeling that this was a real place. It wasn't. There's nothing. Uh, the culture is real. There's nothing. Um, it's unvarnished. People aren't trying to be something. To me, the one picture you showed was strikers. Strikers, yeah. It's a real right? place. And you, well, it's real. It's authentic. That's what I liked. And I, we rented an office on Main Street. I had five languages spoken in their native tongue with a, within a stone's throw of my, um, of my office. I wanted to raise my daughters here because that kind of cultural richness you don't get in Michigan, where, where I came from, where Chinese food is um, sweet and sour pork. Um, yeah, ch yeah, chop suey. Chop suey, that's right. Um, I love that game. So I, I just really loved the depth, uh, the richness, the, the, the realness. And I still think that's here. And, uh, and you know, you don't make a union hotel. You don't make a courthouse. You don't make an egg auction. You can't come in prefab that stuff. And what you guys are doing with the, the uh, kilns, that's exactly the right path. So. Uh, I'm a huge believer that it'll come back. I mean, just maybe, uh, maybe some youth, you know. Age has a way of regenerating. Okay. The Shaker Cafe still has the same effect because my wife goes in there with a four-year-old on a regular basis, and he goes in the door and yells, "Hey, Charlie!" The same, <laughs> that same family, I think. Yeah. So uh, I, I think it's a great town. If you care about historic preservation, uh, show up at council meetings and planning board meetings and write letters to the Democrat and the other papers and make your vision known that how important it is for historic preservation. It's the key to our future and it's so easily lost. Um, yeah. Another building I love is the old women's market where the antique shop is at Main Street. You know, um, Crossing the Unity Bank. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that old building? You know, it's, it's very, very station. funky. No, across from the train station. She across was, from the train station. Tully's Antiques was. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was Williams Brothers. Williams Brothers. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, that, there's something about it. It's so vintage looking, you know, even with this painting and all the stuff inside. It's a little trap and shabby now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it just, it's a shabby shit, I guess. And how's Fleming Castle? So we have one of the Fleming House. Is it Fleming House? It's the same as Fleming House. Yeah. How is it? Uh, it's it was it's being restored, right? What's the what's the status of that? Is it? In, well, it's well underway, and the outside has been completely painted. Okay. And I suspect that I have been in it for a while. No longer than the trustees, but basically uh, there are a number of structural issues that were being addressed. Car Carmen just stopped in the office. They're repainting the interior, I guess. So I think it's, it's very nearly done. Uh, they're painting the interior. I'm sure it's more than repainting the salary. It's basically really well, I think they're down to repaint is what I'm saying. Okay. Through the other issues, and, and painting is the last thing we do. I hope there's an open house so we can go check it out. I think there will be. That would be fun. Yeah. They've done a huge amount of work there. So it's much, much improved. And the shutters aren't with baby blue anymore. <laughs> they can prove. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you so you much. much.